Hey there car fans, Sean from Street or Track here. I'm super excited to show this new product that we've been working on for quite a few years now. Let's just put a 275 on a 9.5 inch wide wheel on the front of this 65.6 Mustang all the way up to a 315 on a 10.5 on a 69.70 Mustang. Stay tuned, let me show you all about it. Oh hey there, you're still watching. That's good. I'm guessing you want to learn more about this product that we came up with. So, on the early Mustangs, the 1965-73 to 73 cars, there's been a few products on the market recently that have enabled you to put some pretty good sized tires in the rear, different mini tub kits, etc. Uh, but on the front, you're always going to be limited by the sheet metal, unless you want to do fender flares, or by the suspension on the inboard side, unless you want to drastically uh, modify the suspension in some way. So we saw a need for a product that will enable you to put some pretty good sized tires on the front. And uh, just like we always do with all of the products that we design, uh, we identified a couple of criteria, and three in fact, uh, for this product. Um, and those three uh, are that if we're going to do this, it has to improve on the suspension geometry as much as possible. Um, it needs to work with the most popular wheel size we feel that if you're going to do this modification, um, that would be a 17 inch wheel, um, 17 or 18 inch wheels. So if you're going to leave the 14, 15 inch wheel crowd and go to this kind of product um, and you're building that kind of resto mod pro touring car, you're probably going to be in the 17, 18 inch wheel crowd. So we didn't want to build it for 18s and not uh, and, and kind of alienate all the 17 inch wheel guys. So this works with 17 inch wheels. Um, and then also we did not want to uh, design a product that would require all of our prior customers over the last two decades to go out and buy a whole new bunch of suspension components and bits and pieces to get this thing to work. So what we came up with works with the vast majority of the existing components that we already have. So you want to see what we came up with that lets you put those huge wheels and tires under the stock sheet mail? Check out these bad boys. Pretty cool, right? Thought you'd like it. So, how do you even begin to build something like that? Well, the first step is uh, to surround yourself with some very talented people. And at Street or Track, we're very, very fortunate to have a few key people um, that work here uh, and help us out from time to time on different projects who are extremely talented. So in this instance, for the spindle, the first guy that was a, a huge help to us was a, a guy named John. John has uh, over 40 years of experience designing suspensions for OEMs um, and uh, race cars. And uh, we hired John, John came in, and uh, we basically uh, assigned those three criteria that we discussed uh, earlier in this video. Um, and uh, John set to work measuring the entire front end of the car. All of the different pickup points, um, where the suspension sits, etc. And then uh, he ran that through a pretty advanced suspension analyzing piece of software. And we actually worked on that for quite a long time and we ended up um, going through over 20 different uh, versions of the suspension to get it to be as optimized as, as possible. Um, and uh, once we have all those XYZ plots, uh, then what happens is, uh, I'm going to show you a few images here. Um, then we've got those XYZ points in space. Um, then we can turn that over to the next uh, wizard that we work with, and that guy is called Matt. Matt is our CAD wizard, and uh, super talented guy, a wonderful designer. Uh, we take those XYZ plots and uh, lay those out in CAD. And uh, with all of our CAD data that we have already for, for our components, we're able to build models on the computer. So. What you can see here is uh, a earlier version of, uh, I don't have any of the finished stuff that I'm going to show you for proprietary reasons, but here's an earlier mo model of the, the spindle as we were developing it. And uh, you can see here that uh, we mocked up a 10 inch wide wheel, a 275 tire, we have our brake system in there, you can see the upper and lower control arms, you can see where all of the coilover is going to go and where the spindle is going to go and uh, we have various different versions of that so we can actually see right on the computer screen before we've even made a single part um, 
what's going to be a, an issue, what's going to interfere, if we need to move anything and go back to John and move something around in the geometry. Um, but he, as you can see here, we've got plenty of clearance. You know, so we worked on that for a long, long time. I mean, this whole project was three years in the in the making. So there's a there's a lot going into this. So once you have all of the CAD data and the model drawn all on the computer, you have to find out if it's going to work in the real world. Um, so uh, that's when we hand all this data over to Andy. Andy is a Mustang enthusiast um, and also owns an engineering firm. Uh, who we we work with to help us figure out how these things are going to work when they're really made. So here you can see a model here. This is an early uh, version design of the spindle, um, and um, Andy uh, specifies a material spec that we should use, and uh, we give him all of the force data that we know of from prior data acquisition, all the G loading data that we've collected over the years of what the cars can be capable of, and then we add a very large safety margin. Um, and uh, Andy inputs all of that data, all of the brake uh, coordinate data and all of that uh, information into the system here and as you can see once you pick out the material spec it's, it loads and, and you can see these stresses and these different colors in different places um, on the material here and uh, you can see and find out if you need to tweak the design any. Um, so then once that's made then we start making real uh, prototypes um, of the final design um, and uh, then we get to driving the cars and, and you know physically putting them on the vehicle um, so uh, yeah I hope that helps to explain a little bit of the background uh, that goes into these projects um, there's an awful lot of work before we even get a, a real part so uh, rest assured we're doing the best that we can to make sure that we uh, keep producing the best products that we can I hope after learning a little bit more about this piece, you're just as excited as we are about it. Let's go over a few more details, shall we? So the bearing size that we're using here is going to be the Timken Set 12 and Set 13. So that's the same as the, the 70 through 73 Mustang for the added strength uh, with the wider tires here. You're going to need that. We're also using a beefed up steering connection here, and that's going to be the same size as the 70 through 73 Mustang outer tie rod end. And then the ball joints here are the 65 through 73 size. The tape is correct there for that. You can use the Moog ball joints that come as standard in our coilover kit, or you can upgrade those to our high precision CNC ones. So what we've essentially created is a drop spindle that fits inside a 17 inch wheel. As you can clearly see from this image here, the ball joint is inside the wheel. That happens to be a 17 by 10 and a half inch wide wheel with a 315 35 17 tire on the front of a 1970 Mustang with nothing more than our front coilover system and a rolled fender lip. The next obstacle to overcome is the steering arm. The stock location wouldn't work, the outer tie rod connection would quickly crash into the rim, so we had to modify the steering arm to be in a different position, all while maintaining correct steering geometry. So let's talk a little bit about brakes. So the original idea was to have the spindle support the drum flange uh, mounting pattern for the brackets that hold the caliper, as well as the disc version. And if you're not familiar, the disc version, the original disc version, had a, a boss kind of on the steering arm here, and then a hole through the upright here, and a bracket spanned between the two. Um, and uh, when we showed those drawings and designs to Andy, our engineer, he, he practically had a heart attack when he saw that giant big hole in the upright. and. Uh, that was kind of a, a no-no. <laughs> um, the, the stresses and loads that we were going to be putting into the spindle with those wider tires um, needed all the strength of a solid piece here, so we kind of nixed that. Um, so let me show you how our brake systems mount to this spindle. If you're going to use this spindle and you want to clear the upper ball joint with your wheel, you're going to be into that 17-inch wheel like we already discussed, and I'm going to show you how to put our 13 by one25 brake system onto this spindle. If you're running an 18 inch wheel you can still use that brake system. You could also fit our 14 by 1.25 six piston, the, the big boy kit. Um, I'm not going to show you that right now but it installs it exactly the same way, just the brackets ever so slightly different. Much larger caliper and a 14 inch rower. Um, right now we're going to focus on the 13. And the first thing you'll notice is that we actually mount the caliper in the in the leading position. That's on the on the forward edge of the spindle. And I'll get into that in a little bit. But let's just start out by this is our custom bracket that we make here. Um, and it's quite simply the, the drum flange pattern here and then an aluminum bracket that we CNC machine. And that's gonna install just on the spindle, just like 
like so. We have some washers, bolts, nuts, things that hold that all in place. I'll quickly try and assemble that now. Like this, we've got some little flange headed serrated nuts there. We'll tighten all this down. There's three that are just like that. And then one kind of nifty one right here that goes straight through into the steering arm and is threaded in the steering arm. So it kind of holds it all together right there without a nut on the back side. We can't access it because the steering arm's there. So those will go into four places and then we'll torque them down. So those four bolts are now torqued. Next would be the hub and the brake rower. I want to spend a few minutes if we can just to talk a little bit about the brake rower. It's a pretty cool piece. It's 13 inches in diameter by one and a quarter thick. Really big, thick air gap here. It gets a lot of air flowing through there so you don't fry your, your brake fluid. Um, it's a US cast finish machine brake rotor on an aluminum hat. The aluminum hat saves a bunch of weight. It's a really nice piece. The other cool thing about uh, the aluminum hat is it allows us to change what's called the hat depth. And that's the distance from this face here, the wheel mounting face back to the, the outboard pad face, this distance right here. And by, by varying this, what it does is it allows us to place the caliper laterally where we kind of want it. And the cool thing about doing such a large deep hat here is it pushes the caliper in far enough that you can practically run a wheel that is, is flat on the inboard side and it will still clear the caliper. I've never seen a wheel quite like that. Most of them always have some kind of bulge in the spokes. So this brake system I haven't really found a wheel that it doesn't fit yet. So the hub and the rotor is now installed. Now onto the brake caliper. This is a really nice piece. It's a forging. It's forged aluminum. Uh, it's nice and lightweight. Very, very stiff. Great big thick pad. So it's a really simple install. You slide it over to the, uh, the brake rotor like so. And then we have a couple of bolts that will install it in the backside. And the nice thing about our brackets is they're, they're aluminum. They're CNC 6061. Uh, aluminum but then we also anodize them and then we also put in some steel inserts so you're not going to strip out the threads in the aluminum by putting the caliper on and off. So that was the install of our 13 by 1.25 brake system in the leading configuration so that's the caliper on the front side of the spindle towards the front of the car in a vertical plane. You'll need to use that uh, if you're going to use the drop spindle. If you're using our regular uh, big spindles or original factory type spindles, you can use the leading or the trailing edge uh, mount kit that we have. Um, it really doesn't matter for those spindles. Um, the reason why you have to use the, the leading edge one for the drop spindles is because the ball joint is now lower than it is with the non-drop spindles. And what happens is when you put the caliper on that trailing edge position and you clear the steering arm at full lock, the caliper is going to hit the upper control arm. So if you're going to use this brake system and our uh, billet drop spindles with our coilover system, you're going to need to use the leading edge caliper mount kit. I hope you had as much fun watching this video as I did making it. If you have any questions about the spindle or any of our other products, give us a call or check out our website streetortrack.com. Don't forget to hit the subscribe and like button.